Welcome to Aesthetic Academy, the only school that won't put you in debt, but probably won't help either. If you have no clue what's going on, don't worry, neither do the instructors. Now, get out your art supplies and quit eating your paint because class is in session. Welcome to the Aesthetic Academy podcast. I'm Tap. I'm B. And I'm Mint. In mint condition. Welcome to the first episode of the podcast where we talk about art things ranging from different styles, techniques, different artists, but most importantly, just generally things we like in art. So what are we talking about today? Today we got some hot, juicy style topics coming up with a little uh, sneak preview of what's to come. We're talking about different artist styles. If you don't know what that is, we will get into it and explain it a little bit better. Some of them hairy. And how people find their style. Uh, if having one more than one style is a bad thing. And straight up copying people's styles. We are also going to touch a bit on practice dead. Without any further ado, let's 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 touch on some style, boys. You got y'all got some style. So earlier, Mint and I were actually like getting into uh, the subject of of different stuff, and it was it was brought up because I was saying that I think of of the three of us that like she's got especially the the painting and the uh, the like mastery of light down to a T, and I want that. I want that right. And and B, you have that like comic booky, cartoony style that's great for like animation. And I guess I have like the semi realism stuff. And if nobody knows what any of that means, that's okay. That's what we're here to talk about, right? <sighs> Fuck, I I don't I don't know where to go from here. My brain just shut off. There was a train, and it it quit. left the station. <laughs> it's <laughs> relatable. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, like, kind of touching on what you are, like, the three of us, vastly different styles. It's kind of uh, of a array of different things. We'll kind of explain what style is here now. Uh, so style is a technique that an artist uses when creating their piece. For example, like how Van Gogh lays down his paint. Like, you think of, like, the brush strokes and how everything is kind of not a block but it is just like a stroke of paint you get like that very stippled almost yeah mm. my brain was going unrendered but that is not the right word <laughs> van gogh did not have proper rendering software um he didn't update his uh graphic card <laughs> and video drivers <laughs> so <laughs> Bro, I, I heard he didn't even have a 3090. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he didn't get enough money. We gotta go back in time and pay the man. <laughs> and it, like, you could go from anywhere from there to like something like uh, how people call it the Cal Art style. Like you see it in your Steven Universe, uh, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, that kind of stuff. Because it's easier for animation. Like different strokes for different folks, essentially. <laughs> Nice, uh, nice. It's just kind of like <laughs> a little, a little oh things uh, that artists like to add to their work to kind of make it stand out. Like doing certain things with your line art, or always adding, like let's say, like a star to the cheek or uh, hearts as like a highlight. Something like that that is easy identifiable to your work and that people uh, recognize it. Like uh, Lolish, a lot of people can recognize their style pretty quick. Ooh, Lolish. Yes, I think that's how you pronounce it. I guess Tab's gonna have to do some uh, research on Lowish. Oh. <laughs> Why am I getting homework in the first episode? <laughs> Sorry, mate. That's just oh, how it goes. Oh shit! Oh, I like their stuff. Oh my god, what? Where have they been? Basically taking over the art community. <laughs> they have been everywhere. Oh, it's man. it's interesting because I know a few people who also do art and you can tell that they have learned their style from Loish. And I like to see how a uh, style can kind of be like compared to a handwriting. Mm. Because everyone has a different handwriting, but everyone kind of starts out the same with learning uh, how to write. Oh, that's actually a really good analogy. I like that. I, sorry, story tangent. 
we used to have these things called agendas that like we would have to get signed off by our guardians and i always forged my guardians so i took his signature right and i i learned how to do uh signatures based off of like how he did his and now that's stuck as how i do my signatures and uh so that that's that's really apt the handwriting thing i think right because like when you learn how to do those basic like you know your your j's and your a's and all that sort of stuff a lot of the swoops and extra details come from i, I think observing and mimicking other people's like how they do their y's how they do their g's and their j's and all those sort of like swoopy dealies you know that actually brings me to the point of like what style is like what what b was saying is that like you have that um like you can add stuff like little stars to the cheeks and stuff like that and like you know like the bean head that kind of deal but a, a lot of where that comes from is is how people simplify and reduce things because that's what most of art is right is we're just describing things we're trying to find ways to convey this is an ear this is a face this is you know um a nose like that kind of stuff um and with B's style, you can definitely see it. She's got like the round little oval noses, and like anytime I see those, I'm like, that's a B. That that's a that's a B art. I always over exaggerate my characters' uh, like lats and like deltoids and stuff. I know, right? And I know where it came from too, right? There's one piece that was drawn for uh, Borderlands that was Krieg, and that's how I learned how to draw torsos. Was that was the first bit of anatomy that I attempted was trying to do a study of Krieg, and so now all of my male characters have that over exaggerated like torso, <laughs> and I can't undo it. I can't get rid of it, and I'm trying. Yeah, uh, you took you took inspiration, uh, and now it's with you forever. It's yours now. I think at that point you just gotta you gotta roll with it. There's no, there's no fighting against. <laughs> just lean into the buff just men. Just lean into the buff mm -hmm. men. There's also a lot of discussion in the art community because a lot of beginner artists think you have to have a style right away to stand out. And a lot of people always ask questions like, how do I find my style? How do I find my style? How do I make one? How do I get it? What uh, monk do I have to climb to the highest mountaintop and... Uh, talk to for the next seven years to be able to develop this and it's kind of a tricky question because it's not usually something that's just going to be put in your little hands for you to manipulate and grow you kind of have to do it yourself much like a lot of art things <laughs> much like handwriting yeah that's very true because uh, all handwritings are unique to you, smiley face. <laughs> Wink. Cat for interrupting me. Hmm? Oh, I was saying the much like handwriting. I was like, fuck you, Tap, no, for interrupting I... me. No. <laughs> I... I thought it. No, 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 no. I'm just giving you okay. shit. I'm just giving wow, you wow, shit. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wee wow. <laughs> uh, and honestly, it's probably going to be a little bit hard to hear, but. Uh... Gotta do your find your style through practice and sometimes wink wink nudge nudge stealing <laughs> stealing but Ugh. it will come naturally along the way uh, but stealing in this context is not like copying or like imitation which is kind of a tricky subject on its own because you can always hear about like the oh, teacher they copied me what the hell. I personally, I hate, I hate the phrase steal like an artist, even though it's kind of apt and, and I hate calling it that. Right. Um, because I know what we were about to get into was, was doing studies, right. Of, of copying someone's style to try to, um, amalgamate it into your own, but I, that's, it's not stealing. It's not stealing. It's learning. And, and I don't know how to phrase it better. But I think that's where a lot of the hang up comes from is that like everybody calls it stealing. <laughs> I'm like, ah, we need a better word for it. Maybe we're the ones to come up with that. Let's let's spitball. It should be just borrowing. Or you know what? My favorite yoinking. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I dig I'm that. I'm like, if I see someone who is rendering something like it's something that I dig, I'll be like, all right, I'm just gonna yoink. 
and apply it to my own. I think it's then it's actually like saying stealing, but it's like less less harsh. It's cuter. Stealing. Yeah, it, it, it's it's <laughs> less criminal. <laughs> Steals from you cutely. <laughs> 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 oh man. Yeah, but uh, yoinking, as the term is now coined. Uh, it's more of like in a sense of what you you like from other artists and combine into your own pieces, not just being like, I'm a hundred percent stealing from you. Uh, I'm just gonna one for one it, <laughs> which is not a good thing to do, especially if you trace it, because that's gonna teach you nothing. Well, mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's definitely a difference between like. Yoinking and one for oneing. Yoinking, or in a sense, still copying. Like, for example, if you do fan art for 101, let's say, like, if you're drawing a uh, Pokemon, like a certain Pokemon splash art from, like, the cards, like, you wanted the exact mm -hmm. same pose you want basically to one to one the piece. You want it to come out looking exactly the same way, like a copy. Or that it, it is going to teach you stuff for sure because you're going to figure out how uh, the artist that you like lays down certain line works and how to apply it into your own pieces. Uh, and you're going to pick up like subtle techniques, especially because I think a lot of younger artists, uh, you're drawing the things you love. Like for me, happened to be uh, Invader Zim. I don't want to talk about it. But uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about it at some point. <laughs> yeah. Later. One day. <laughs> like learning how uh, that style works and being able to like do a turnaround of the poses, how the head squished and squashed. Like little did I know it at the time, but it was teaching me like turnarounds and how things moved in the theoretical 3D 2D space. And I, I, I think there's a, there's a disconnect, too, in terms of, like, it, it is okay to one-for-one one like that, as long as you're not presenting it as your own, yeah. right? Um, because famous artists, or, or you know, art, art students back in the day, uh, you know, in the Renaissance and stuff like that, used to do um, study pieces, where they would, they would, they had a phrase specifically for it. They would say, this is... Um, you know, uh, like water under the bridge after Monet kind of thing, right? And that adding that word after was, I painted this, but it was a study of this artist. And even that is kind of sketch. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying you should do studies and not be proud of them, but like, maybe don't post them for clout and stuff. Because um, it's one thing, like, to do the Pokemon thing where you're you're trying to mimic uh ken sugimori style and get that like watercolor and leaving like the whites for the highlight um you know down pack perfectly to get that old school feel but it's another thing entirely to like do that and then post it as your own and be like look at what i did even though it's it's you could almost overlay them perfectly um because you're trying to achieve that it, it in that way you will incorporate that artist's style into your own when you go to make new art. Just like how I can't not draw over-exaggerated buff men torsos because I incorporated Krieg from Borderlands into mine, you know? It will inherently stick with you. However, you should not be trying to present it as your own, you know? And and that's, that's the difference between stealing and yoinking, I think. Mm. Yeah, I I agree. Like, especially if you're doing it for monetary value, mm. think of it like you see all the knockoffs pop up, and they're usually like, for example, in like pins. We'll use like Disney pins. How like the real thing, like all the lines are clean. They have like all their watermarks on the back. There's like the bootleg where it'll be soft enamel. It'll be like underfilled. Kind of like that. But yeah, I agree. One one for ones have existed forever, just as long as you're le not like, yeah, this is mine. This is my original work. Do not steal. <laughs> also, having more than one style is not a bad thing, because I think a lot of people tend to put all their eggs in one basket. I mean, if you're good at it, 
go for it. If you want to explore more, do it. Because uh, I think people are dim- intimidated by having to master more than one. Because especially like, oh, jack of all trades, but master of none. The thing also is when you stick to one style and one style only, you might just get stuck in your creative ability. And I think it's important to develop a style using either a different medium, whether it's digital, whether it's watercolor paint, color pencil, working in uh, uh, graphite versus uh, ballpoint pens. Um, And I think finding a... Again, a handwriting in your, your style when it comes to medium can really help you um, become more looser in that. So it's I think it's very important to develop different styles if you can. And it, I think it also comes naturally as well. I felt like none of that made any sense because I felt like I jumped from one thing to another. <laughs> no, no, that made perfect sense. There, there's there's virtue and versatility too like you're saying is is that um you know trying something out in a different medium or trying something out in a different style might lead you to find uh, the answer to whatever problem you're having in your current piece um but also just inherently on its own right so regardless you're going to incorporate those styles into your own if you start mimicking them but one of the ways that i make the most amount of money is because uh, I learned how to do art in the style of um, Akihiko Yoshida, who is the Final Fantasy XIV artist. If you've ever played Final Fantasy XIV, you know there's a lot of thirst trap stuff, and people pay for thirst traps, and people are like, hey, can you draw my character in Akihiko Yoshida's style? And if you could pull that off, you usually get a lot more money. And there's a whole moral gray area when it comes to shit like that. There, there's a whole moral gray area that that comes with that because then like you're going, oh, is are you taking art from that artist? Or should they have gone to them instead? And I, I don't know where I land on it specifically because it's hard to say if that's yoinking or stealing. <laughs> you know, <sighs> that's um, that's quite a difficult one because I think that for me personally that i'm pretty good in different styles but if someone would ask me like can you draw this specific thing in this specific person's style i think i would just tell them to f off because it's like no i i have developed this specifically um even if the style would be similar it's still my own thing I don't want to even attempt to alter my uh, muscle memory just to fit someone else's style more. So I think there's virtue in that as well. In in that, I, I get what you're saying is that if somebody's approaching you for art, you want to give them a mint original and not just like a knockoff um, or a copy. Um, and I... Yeah, I don't know. There's there's some of those those artists, you know, that everybody wants that that style, but they're too busy or anything like that. And and I don't know. Maybe maybe what I'm doing is morally bankrupt. <laughs> maybe that's what I just discovered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but, I don't um, think I don't think so actually. It because it, huh, it because now I might be just contradicting myself, but it's also like yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's morally bankrupt. Like, I, I wouldn't say that. Because you, you're you yeah. not going to draw the same thing as the person you're trying to quote-unquote mimic. It's mm-hmm. still going to be different. And it's still going to have your touch in it. Like, your soul in it. My my handwriting. Yeah, your handwriting in it. Yeah, yeah. Because I... I... I'm not as good as Akahiko Yoshida. I will admit that flat out. Like, I would kill to be able to do the stuff they do. But, like Mint said, that my stuff shows up in that. Because I'm not a computer, I can't mimic it one for one, you know. Um, I could do my best to try to approach that. And I think maybe that's more of like an homage kind Mm -hmm. of thing. 
you know, versus, but I do, I definitely get, I, I wouldn't find it um, prudish or anything to be like, no, I will not do that. I'm only doing stuff in my style. You know? I think what I was trying um, to say with that is that it, I think it was more than towards the client, the idea that yeah. there might then be that expectation that you would produce maybe the exact same thing, basically become a printer. Maybe oh, in that okay. sense, maybe yeah. that's what I was trying to say. Um, because oh, I if you. someone would be like, hey, can you draw me a thing that would be kind of like in this, the, the animated Pokemon series style? And I mean, I can do that, but it's not gonna look exactly like like that like i can try to uh do some studies and 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 that but it's not going to be the same and if they would expect me to be like no this has to look like a screenshot from the animated series (laughs) then you know (laughs) but i mean there are people like that who are like no this has to be the exact same thing or (laughs) overwatch art commissioners Mm. i'm looking at you I think the difference is offering versus asking, because Tap is offering it. Hey, I've had practice in this. This is my examples. And like Mint's trying to be like, any random man walks up on the street into Mint's DMs <laughs> is like, hello, I would like you to draw me uh, my Clifford the Dog OC, <laughs> and I want it exactly from the show. Oh, you don't offer Clifford uh, drawings? You're an artist, aren't you? Puh. Honestly, no. If someone would ask me to draw a Clifford the Dog OC and make it look <laughs> from the show, I think I would. I, you know, I, you know, I still would mm-hmm. try to do it, but it's more of like, don't expect me to not put my own your stank my on. stank on it. Yeah, put my <laughs> yeah. own little uh, uh, piss uh, for territory on it. You know. Yeah, Yeah, I I get that. You kind of run into like the Matt Mercer effect, right? So like where a bunch of people who get into D&D after watching Critical Role are like, why isn't this exactly like a bunch of professional voice actors Mm -hmm. playing Dungeons and Dragons together, you know? And it's like, because we're not a bunch of professional voice actors, you know? But yeah, I definitely definitely get where you're coming from with the like that expectation of you must do it one to one i am disappointed in you son you know so i you know yeah. i guess i wasn't then trying to say that what you're doing is not correct or correct or whatever i think it's just like a total diff and also then saying no what you're doing is not morally bankrupt i think it's like a totally fine thing to do because again it's like a style that you have developed it just happened to be the same f- font or based on the same font as another person but just a little bit different so instead of comic sans it's comic tap Mm -hmm. exactly no and i i wasn't i wasn't thinking that you were that was like a realization that i was coming to on my own of like uh uh-oh am i the bad guy (laughs) no but it you know i made it also kind of sound like that and now i feel like i have also contradicted myself but it's also like a thing that i would have to think about like how how does this work how does this apply in real life and what am i saying i'm I'm saying like no this is the wrong thing and then actually being like well i mean well is it i think that's most of the subjects when it comes to art is it's such a nebulous thing that it's hard to make arguments in any one direction because it, it's all it's all shades of gray right and it's all different hues so you can't just be like this is okay and this isn't okay you know yeah, it's it's wild. Trying to talk about art is it's hard. Really, it's really difficult, yeah. Yet here we are, restraining that horse and getting up on the saddle. Yeehaw! We're little art cowboys. All I'm seeing is like a uh, Pepe the Frog with like his little cowboy hat and then like some... <laughs> <laughs> that's we. It's true. Yeah, that's us. We're somehow also the one that is like on the ground about to cry that has dropped their nuggies. <laughs> <laughs> the duality of artists. <laughs> I'm the Spordos Parde meme where his spaghetti is fallen out of his pockets. That's me. Jesus Christ, that's some old oh stuff. <laughs> yeah, Showing uh, our yeah, age geez. right here. <laughs> Boomer alert. We're um we're we're experienced. <laughs> that's how you know you can trust us. We're well seasoned. Well seasoned. We've got lots of flavor. <laughs>
Mine just happens to be like a hot dog that's been kicked down the road a bunch. My god, would I still <laughs> eat it? <laughs> okay. All right. So, we've we've figured out style, right? Or did you have more more style? I think I wrapped up pretty well points. No. We we got we got a touched what is style. We we tickled that area. Talk a little bit about how people find their style. I guess touching on that a little bit more too. Mood board. Make a little mood board of styles you like. My god. See what they do. Incorporated them on your own stuff. Like if you like some way somebody does line art, try it out. See if you like it. You might learn something from it. For the people out there that don't know what a mood board is, can you explain <laughs> a mood board? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's some that's some juicy stuff there. Um so basically a mood board is a collage of things that you kinda accumulate and you stick together that kind of fit the mood or style that you're looking for for whatever you're making. It's also very popular with the middle-aged women on Pinterest. If they are, <laughs> you know, looking to decorate a specific room in their house, they will just accumulate all kinds of pictures and colors and textures and bam, you have a mood board. So fellas, we do want you to know that if you have no idea what a mood board is, we can definitely tell that you have not interacted with a lot of women in their middle ages. <laughs> <laughs> we we have some stories. We have stories. We also talked about how uh, having one style isn't a bad thing. And we talked about basically just straight up copying and the premise of yoinking. Because I feel like as soon as you say like copying or stealing, it gets just thrown into the same category of tracing. Yeah. Which is not. I, I, I need a yoink emote now. Uh, I have a yoink sound effect. Will that do? No, no, because I need to make an emote for my streams. Because anytime I do studies, I'm going to be like, I'm just going to yoink this guy's mm. stuff. You know. Can I also mm -hmm. like mention that because now we are talking sort of in a point of view for people who are not experienced in art or are just starting out and are looking for a style. I think it's also important for people who might have already considered to have developed a style to accept that people will take it from you. People will yoink bits and pieces from your style and you should be okay with that. I can understand that it might be like a really big issue if they are also like copying then your actual work and your style that you know then that becomes like morally bankrupt as Tap would like to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it it is important to you know be a giver you know let people <laughs> let people yoink your style because you have yoinked your style from someone. If they're fucking selling shit one for one and monetarily, get their ass, girl. Yeah, so it's 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 the thing where like if if you people are saying out there saying like I didn't yoink any elements of my art style from anything, you absolutely have. Even if you think you haven't, just by virtue of observing stuff. Just from having eyes and being able to see, you have been yoinking art styles from things. Everything that you've been observing has been slowly incorporating itself into your style. And that's another thing. That's a that's a subject for a whole other episode about like our obligation to consume media, uh, uh, media and and how doing so actually will inject itself into your art style, which is, is a good thing. It's not bad. Evolving is good. Uh, changing is good. That is the human nature. But, you know, if, if you're trying to be stingy and be like, I, you cannot take something that's like you did, too. <laughs> We've all done it. It's all happening. Just don't do like sonic recolors and say, like, this is my my, you know, original shit. Remember the YouTube tutorial you watched three years ago on a Monday evening at 7 p.m.? <laughs> you yoinked that. You did. It's true. We seen it. We seen it. We were all three of us were there, hovering over you, t posing, and you yoinked it. We were so little, you didn't notice. Yeah, <laughs> we seen to you yoink. Like they say, like no art idea is like a hundred percent original anymore. Like for a recent example, uh, let's say the Owl House, uh, the idea of which has been around for one time. They just put their own like spin and ideas into it, like the idea 
of magic and how like certain things in the world world would work their world building something new out of the idea of there being witches and like other dimensions and how that would work oh oh jesus jesus oh, sorry fellas i i dropped i dropped paint over my hold on uh, newspaper oh, oh. hold on let me let me brush all the paint off oh it's getting it's getting fucking color everywhere oh what is this oh i have seemed to have picked up the uh, exclusive paint scoop newspaper fellas let's <laughs> you want to have a little read uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah hit me with it uh so welcome welcome to my funny little silly segment the exclusive paint scoop where i have two art headings in front of me uh, one I think is funny, one I think is kind of serious, and I give them my own titles that I made for it and make them guess which is what. You I'm ready, bad fellas? at these. I'm bad at these. I... I lose every one. I'm ready. All right. First, first title mm-hmm. is Fuck Politics. I need my vitamin C. <laughs> I wrote that. Okay. <laughs> Second. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Who needs bloodhounds when you have badgers? Keep in mind these are all art related. They tie to art somehow, some Me, way. When I am uh, having my badgers in Planet Zoo. Also, some <laughs> lore no one would understand. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the funny? What's the serious voice? Fuck politics. I need my vitamin C. Is a hundred percent the serious. I'm in. I am gonna say the opposite. I'm thinking the badgers are serious. The Badgers mean uh, business. Min wins. <laughs> I told you, I always lose these. How do I always lose these? <laughs> I had so much hope for you in this oh. one. I genuinely did. I, I thought, I thought, I was like, okay, it's it's gonna be the Badger one is gonna be the serious one, but then I second guess because I was like, I'm always wrong. The, oh, I always lose these. All right, all right. Hit us. Follow your heart, buddy boy. I know, I know. So we're going to start with the serious one first. So who needs bloodhounds when you have badgers? Uh, real title being Badger leads archaeologists to hoard of Roman coins in Spain. Huh. So basically this badger led these archaeologists to 200 Roman coins that have been hidden in a cave in Spain for centuries. Can you imagine just being an archaeologist wandering around in a field and suddenly the money badger shows up and is like, Hoo hoo hee hee, follow me, I've got some coins for ye. <laughs> Come and you might find some history. Yee. Jeez. How is this not the silly one? <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll see. <laughs> so basically, they found uh, this badger that was searching for food or digging near its nest, and they were like, oh, you look interesting. <laughs> uh, and they started digging around as well and found the coins. They see like 90 coins have been dug up by this badger. He's literally making money out of the ground. (laughs) So they found a total of 209 coins dating from about 200 AD to about 400 AD from the late Roman period. Uh, So when barbarians such as uh, Suvi arrived in Uberian Pamphylia. I'm so bad at names. Take this information knowing forward that I can never say names of anything. Yeah, so basically they were just like, oh shit, we found the money badger. Oh my god. Uh, this is an article on CNN. Oh. Thank you, CNN. Ugh. So so what we've learned is when in Rome, do as the badgers do. Cool. Yeah, uh, basically follow badger for money. Uh, and here we have the article, Fuck Politics, I Need My Vitamin C, from artnet.com. Uh, Tap's gonna beat himself up over this one because the title we've talked about it before. No. <laughs> Jim Carrey says the political phase of his art career is over. Now he's going on to painting mangoes. I got you. You did. It's Jim Carrey and his mangoes. You did. I was wondering how you were <laughs> going to talk about that again, but <laughs> my God. I put a little spin on it. Uh, so basically, Jim Carrey makes art. If you didn't know. Uh, especially over the pandemic period. Uh, He really got his little hands in there, much like a lot of people did. But 
He was often doing like cartoon depictions of power hungry politicians, but now. Sorry, I just read the word comedian cum artist. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> it literally says comedian dash cum dash artist. Like cum as in um, the cummy wummies or con yeah, as in like I Yeah, am- like C U M. C U M. Mint, cum how did they artist. find an article about you? <laughs> well, what can I say? So this came about the time when he was doing Sonic the Hedgehog, like, uh, <laughs> like promoting it. This is when he was promoting the new film. He's like, you know what? The, my fans are gonna love if I tell them about my <laughs> mango obsession right now. Uh, so in like an interview with Yahoo Entertainment, he was just like, yeah, uh, actually, I don't want to do topical cartoons anymore. Uh, apparently. That uh, won him a gallery show at LA's uh, Macron Gallery. Uh, And this man says, to me, that was a time where I just wanted to be the lighthouse that was saying, hey, stay off the rocks. You're headed for the rocks. Carrie says the last chapter of his artistic career. We're headed in. We're still headed for the rocks. But I've decided you understood my message. So I don't need to be stepped in it anymore. (laughs) Sonic, I'm no longer interested in politics. I only care about mangoes. I miss my wife, Tails. Maybe the mangoes will bring her back. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Oh, so this man straight up went from like a reverse Ben Garrison to like, like just mango man. Yeah, so he characterizes... Uh, the mangoes, he became obsessed with the fruit of the gods, mm. as he calls them, because they represent abundance and sweetness of the gifts of the universe. And that's where Jim Carrey's living, laughing, and loving. By God. Oh my. So they start talking about like his political paintings again, uh, and some of them they describe as... Uh, lampooning right-wing figures such as Roy Moore, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and Robert Miller. He's depicted Kay Ivey as a fetus, Jeffrey Epstein as the creature from the Black Lagoon, Sean Hanty as a manatee. Wait, 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 wait. Sean Hannity as a manatee? As a manatee. Why? Is it just because Hannity sounds like manatee? Uh, yeah. I hope so. Uh, And the first picture they show is basically the Wizard of Oz, like the classic version style. And the Wicked Witch is Trump. And I have no idea who the two monkeys are. I I have no idea. I have no idea who those other two are supposed to be. Like, maybe Ben Shapiro? I don't I don't know. I don't know anything about politics so i can't help you yeah why does no why does one of them kind of look like um mark zuckerberg <laughs> i can see it <laughs> what is that <laughs> he's feeding you what is that is that the french flag wait the, that's the russian wait. flag did this did this grinch really just get a photo of the white <laughs> house and put it in the background yeah yeah, yeah, totally. I didn't even notice. Mood, though. Oh my god, he didn't even, like, blur it or anything. He just, like, Mood, though. went to, like, stock photos and, and just... Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, Jim. Come on, man. You know what? At least he's done with this. At least he's not... At least he's not painting low-hanging fruit. <laughs> I beg to differ. (laughs) But yeah, those are our news for this week. I I support him in his uh, art endeavors. Yeah, I don't think his drawings are bad. I think he's fucking going for it. It looks a lot lot better than you think. Please Google it. Please look at his work, everyone. They're not bad caricatures. I'm just like, why? Why this? You know, I guess someone has to make political cartoons. Here, let me send a mango, a mango one to freshen the palate. (laughs) (laughs) In 2020, mangoes. It's a picture of Jim Carrey uh, basically about to caress a mango, for those wondering. Oh, hold on. I think there's another spot in this newspaper. 
Oh my god, it looks like artist birthdays. Here, here man, you want to you take a closer look at oh, yeah. the, the news? Happy paper? birthday to you! <laughs> <laughs> we want to wish uh, a very, very happy birthday to Angel Decora. She is, or she was, rather, a Winnebago painter, illustrator, and Native American rights advocate. She was born on May 3rd in the year 1871 and unfortunately passed away at the age of 47 in February 6th, 1919. Uh, If she were still alive today, she would be 152 years old. Uh, She mainly focused on, or her art style, she mainly focused on um, a combination of Western techniques with traditional traditional Native American styles. And uh, she was part of the tonalism movement, which is uh, a movement where I would describe it as painting an environment with a misty atmosphere. So uh, happy birthday, Angel. We love you. Mwah. Ooh. Happy birthday! That's cool. That is cool. That's that's really cool. I I I uh, I like her art. If you get a chance, look it up. It's it's kind of Bob Rossian, you know. God, it's got like those like like that misty, you know, misty mountains kind of vibe. And her uh, illustrations are you can you can tell the combination where she still uh, honors the the Native American traditional style of using the patterns and, and colors while adding a Western spin to it. So I think it's a, a nice way of colliding both worlds. Her story is a little bit is a little bit tragic, so I Oh no. I mean it, you know, she did get kidnapped and was separated from her family for three years. And she also did pass away at a relatively young age. Um, yeah. Assumingly, from what I understand, because of influenza and pneumonia. Yeah, as was the want of the time. Yes. Um, uh-huh. Wait, so this person was kidnapped and separated from their family and still did art? And still did art. I, I like, if I get up early, or I'm like woken up early, I'm like, oh, no art today. Yeah, no. I was gonna say, what's our excuse? <laughs> yeah, what's our fucking excuse? Damn. <laughs> oh. Some of us have a depression, okay? I think all three of us do. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, it would be good to, you know, honor her by... Uh, just at least looking her up, and uh, I think we should definitely mention her in the description of this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have a link to all articles used, uh, so you can absolutely look at this and the news segments for yourself. Have a little look at what we're seeing. Yeah. Uh, pry behind the stage curtain, as you will. Don't look, I'm naked. Now I want to look even more. <laughs> Are we done finding newspapers? Are we going to leave the newspapers oh. alone? Oh, that found another one. No! Big news. No, I'm joking. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about practice, Dad. Oh, good. Oh, good. Tap twiddles his fingers in excitement. He's been waiting for this day. <laughs> I have no idea what any of this means, so... That's what we have tap for. So... Enlighten me. My my lovely students and co-hosts, do you know what Pinterest is? Oh, as a soon-to-be middle-aged woman, <laughs> <laughs> I know what Pinterest is. So we talked about it before. We talked about using mood boards and stuff like that. Gosh, it's great going on Pinterest and collecting art tips and tutorials and looking at references and stuff that you want to you wanna paint. Yeah, how often do you get around to that? How many thousands of pins do the people out there have that they go, I'm going to learn from this and then never do, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Listen. (laughs) Listen. What happens, this is is what practice debt is. This is 
uh, I'm sure other people talk about it. This is my my little thing too. Um, it is fun and easy to hoard tutorials and to collect art tips and collect references and inspiration and make mood boards and stuff like that. It's fun and it's easy, right? Um, but what it does is it tricks our brain into thinking that we've actually accomplished something. And I'm not saying that you haven't accomplished something. What I'm saying is that your brain writes off that little bit of practice. You say, I've done my art for today. I've done my civic duty. But what you're doing is you're creating practice debt for yourself. Uh, each, I think it's suggested that for each four hours of study, of like actually collecting references, looking at stuff, observing it, reading, for each hour of that, you should be doing four hours of physical practice, right? Um, because if you're not, if you're just looking at the stuff, you're just training your eyes and not your hands, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good. It's good to create a visual library, right? It's good to, to pick up stuff like that, but you have two different sections. You have a hard library and a soft library. I, I know. Don't laugh. We're adults here. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> Baby girl, you turn my, my soft library in a hard library. <laughs> As you should though. As you should. So, uh, a soft library is when you have seen something and you can vaguely recall what it looks like. A hard library is when you have drawn that thing. So both your eyes and your hands know what they're doing. And the more I say this, the more like a euphemism it sounds. That's what art is. Art's all about dicks. That's why oh. they ask you to draw people naked. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Art is just... Art is so sexual. It's such a sexual relationship between oh. your brain and your hands. And the You're making piece, love of to that piece of media that you are using to create life. You're making love to your preferred <laughs> method of creating That's what art. you're saying, Mint, is that you have to work the piece really yeah. good. But don't overwork it. Well, you gotta finish it, so... <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you finish. That's not true. You don't have to... You don't have to finish. It's... The the journey is all that matters. All the piles mm. of whips that we all have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. But that that's part of it. That's part of practice debt, right? Is Is that... Is that you start a thing, but you don't actually learn anything from it, right? Is, is if you are actually learning something from those pile of whips, then you're free. I excuse you. I've written you a pass. You're good to go out to recess, kid. Um, however, if, if you're doing these whips and you're just drawing what you know and what is comfortable to you, then you're not pushing anything. You're not practicing. You're not advancing yourself. You're not evolving, you know? Um, You'll train that muscle memory for that thing that you want to draw, but do you really want to be the person who only draws Invader Zim characters? Do you really want to be the person who only draw draws portraits um in like quarter quarter face? Yeah. Um me. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's all I'm suggesting. So with, with the idea of practice that, keep it in mind when you are collecting stuff. I'm not saying you have to specifically adhere to the one hour, four hour methodology, right? But what I'm saying is that if you are scrolling through Pinterest and you're saving pins and you're making mood boards and you're finding things that uh, you think are, are really cool and you're going to learn from it, make sure you're actually learning from it. Make sure that you aren't just checking your box and being like, I did my art for the day, right? Actually have like a, a stick it note or a piece of paper or your, your digital canvas up and actually start doing some of that, right? Incorporate that into your, your scrolling because it's fun. I do it too. I, I go through, I have like 7,000 pins in my art pin board. <laughs> and like half of them are repins and like half of them I haven't even looked at. Because um, it's fun to scroll. It's fun to like find stuff that is going to inspire you. And just by seeing it, it kind of does. But like you got to you gotta put in the practice. You got to put in the hours. Yeah, it's like you know? any skill. 
You gotta work to it to get to it. Not a million percent are gonna be off running running the bases straight off the the rip. Because a lot of times, especially, and I'm sure we'll touch on it in a later episode, uh, seeing a lot of people who do have more than talent than you and letting that get you down. Sometimes people who are talented off the rip just don't go any further. They don't push themselves. They're just like, I'm already good. I don't need to learn anything else. Hmm. And, and that that's a whole thing, too. And yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that in a different episode. But we, we, we were talking about it earlier. And I've been doing art since like 2017, which is a lot fewer years, like chronologically, than some of my fellow artists. Um, but I've progressed significantly quickly. But what you don't see is that I spend 12 hours a day in those like first two years doing actual theory study, right? Like actually sitting down, reading and comprehending what like was up with perspective and composition and anatomy, and then applying that and trying to draw it and mimic it and, and do it in a way that I was able to learn, you know? Um, so, you know, don't compare yourself uh, for someone who's been doing, you know, 12 years of art, but has, you know, 36 years of practice debt <laughs> versus someone who's been doing four years of art, but only has maybe, you know, five years of practice debt. And they've done those first four years, you know? But also don't be hard on yourself for not doing the amount of hours. Um, like Tap said that he did what was it 12 hours of art um yeah and you know also the energy to do it like i'm i'm not i'm not like uh, dissing you tap like you know it's really good to to you know use the hours to practice but if if you re uh, reader <laughs> if you the reader uh not the listener um just cannot afford to spend that much time like don't be hard on yourself it should still like art should be still like a hobby and a passion and you shouldn't hate yourself for doing it so if if you can't do 12 hours a day five minutes is also good and if you can't even do five minutes 30 seconds something and and that's that's a good point. Please don't do what I did. I was miserable. <laughs> but it like Mint said, like I had the energy and the time. I'm effectively retired. So like I had the the time and energy to put into that, you know. Um five minutes is fine, thirty seconds is fine. You don't gotta do it every day. Thank you, Mint. <laughs> because God, that would <laughs> could you imagine someone just listening and being like Oh, I need to do 12 hours. <laughs> this guy did 12 hours. Like, no, no, child, no. But if you can do 12 hours and you love to do 12 hours, also don't let us stop you to do 12 hours. Just be aware of your, of your mental and physical energy. Like, if you can't afford to do it, then go ahead. No one is stopping you. Do it at your pace. Yes, exactly. Some of us just have a pace of a plow horse. <laughs> and boy, did you plow. Boy, did I plow. <laughs> I plowed those you pieces. You sowed your seed I... into art. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, delicious. Yeah. Um, the comparison episode's going to be coming later. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get into the guts of that. We'll get all nitty gritty and, and you know... Um, talk about talk about that kind of stuff oh yeah we have a lot planned a uh, little sneak peek for the next episode talking about the invisible sketchbook uh, the bastardization of sketches and why Instagram 15 is a shitty lie uh, and a little bit about social media and how that affects your art because that's a big thing in the modern age uh, we've been thrust to look at everything all of the time. <laughs> uh, and that's been fucking with our mental health. Yeah. 
yeah, there's a little sweet tea uh, more to come. Uh, if you ever have any questions or any fun facts you want us to read about art or any news articles you want me to to look at or talk about, uh, give us a little shout at aestheticacademypodcast at gmail.com or reach us on our social medias. We'll post them below. Yeah, in the description. They're in the notes, along with uh, a lot of the stuff that we talked about here today in the articles uh, that we pulled. But yeah, boys, any closing notes? Keep doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you. Big, juicy kisses on top of your forehead. Mwah. <laughs> the mint is the mom of the podcast. <laughs> you mean MILF of the podcast. Of course, it was implied. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the sub notes all right all right everyone have a wonderful art journey we'll see you next time uh and remember don't, don't eat, eat your, your pains, pains.